the Russian wilderness. Immense, diverse, and seldom seen. Now revealed, in the north lies the Arctic, a place of extreme hardship, demanding finely honed survival skills, where life is precarious and intimidating. Here, nature battles with itself as wildlife confronts the elements. Life isn't easy in the Arctic. Russia, the world's biggest country. With diverse landscapes, from vast forest to arid desert, immense mountains and inland seas. In the north, Russia shrinks and grows. Land and sea blend into one as ocean turns to ice. This is the Arctic. At the height of winter, fluid borders expand dramatically. The Arctic ice blankets an area twice the size of Australia. Animals have adapted to live above and below its fickle surface. At the beginning of March, in the far west, the ice sheet on the White Sea begins to crack. Thousands of ordinarily solitary harp seals gather here to give birth. Up to 40 seal cows may share one breathing hole, surfacing near their offspring left on the ice. They find their own among the crowd by recognizing its scent and possibly its call, and ignoring others. Baby seals weigh only 10 kilos at birth, but in less than two weeks, they will be as heavy as a 10-year-old child. With its umbilical cord still raw, the latest born tests its chilly new home. A quick sniff confirms she has found the right baby. A pup's life starts tough. Harp seals only suckle their young for 12 days. They can gain two kilos every day, thanks to mother's milk, which is 45% fat. With so little time, struggling to feed is a bad start. Once the mother abandons it, the pup must survive up to 10 days alone on the ice, developing a waterproof coat before adventures into the sea. Being cute will only get it so far. It'll have to manage alone very soon. For those first few days, even in the water, mother seals never stray too far from their young. If she's not paying attention, she could lose her little one forever on the sliding puzzle of ice flows. Those with their pups beside them have no sympathy for others that struggle to find their young. She must search a little harder. Male harp seals also stay close. The end of weaning marks the start of mating season, bringing the harp seals full circle. But he's too early. She gives him a clear and dismissive head signal. And she won't change her mind. By mid-March, howling has no effect. 
the young seals are abandoned. Now weighing 35 kilos, they prepare to go it alone, trading in downy camouflage for a slick wetsuit. While young harp seals take to the sea, their nemesis roams the ice. Polar bears spend most of their lives on the frozen pack hunting seals. Off the northeast coast of Russia in the Chukchi Sea is a small island called Wrangel. It's the destination for one of the most important bear populations. Around 25,000 bears roam the North Pole. Many take advantage of Wrangel Island's seclusion while it's locked in ice. Up to 500 pregnant polar bears make their dens here and on neighboring Herald Island each year. It's the highest density in the world. Polar bears aren't really white. They look that way because their fur reflects light. Below, black skin absorbs the sun's heat. Stretching over 7,000 square kilometers, Wrangel Island is almost the size of Crete. Its mountains rise 350 stories high. The island boasts the highest biodiversity in the Arctic. 100 species of migratory birds nest here. Every May, 150,000 pairs of snow geese fly in from their North American winter quarters. It's their only breeding colony in the whole of Asia. Their arrival doesn't go unnoticed. An Arctic fox in its winter coat comes looking for a meal. But geese are strong and surprisingly good at defending themselves. The fox, which will eat almost anything, will have to find a meal elsewhere. In May, the sun grows stronger, but snow still covers the islands, valleys and mountains. Birds huddle around any spots where earth pokes through. The long migration has left smaller birds depleted. They need to feed quickly. As the bear patches spread, some areas become leks, display rings for males that want to show off to the ladies. Ruffs deserve their elegant name, but these males are dressed to fight. For all the effort, the females don't really seem to care. Though spring eventually comes to the Russian Arctic, winter doesn't surrender easily. Polar air masses can suddenly change the weather. Temperatures drop to minus 10 degrees Celsius and the snow begins. Winter makes a brief but powerful comeback. In the end, the warming sun breaks winter's spell. Slopes begin to melt. Below ground, a solid layer of permafrost soil stays frozen. Unable to penetrate, Waters form streams that run to lower ground. For 
For a short time, rivers flow across the tundra. Finally, the ground around the snow goose colony thaws. But their troubles aren't over. A ripple goes through as a wolf passes. They need to eat about three kilos of food a day. And a couple of geese would provide that nicely. So the birds keep a very close watch on the predator. Putting nesting disputes aside, they unite against a common enemy. The hunter hunted. There are just too many angry birds for one wolf to take on. The geese keep a sharp eye out. Not all predators are so easily intimidated. Arctic foxes raid the nests daily. The gander stands guard, but the fox, molting its winter white, slips through. In the cold snap, some geese abandoned nests and eggs, leaving easy pickings. When food is plentiful, he'll stash some for leaner times. He could dig hundreds of hiding places for individual eggs, or he might make a cache of several in one place. In the cold tundra ground, eggs stay edible for months. But once he's looted the abandoned nests, he turns his attention elsewhere. The fox tests the resolve of the ganders. If one of them wavers, the predator makes his move. Victory. At the end of June, summer comes to the Russian Arctic, transforming it. More than 400 plant varieties flourish on Wrangell Island, twice the number found in other comparable Arctic tundras. Summer brings the peak of the breeding season, when animals and plants make the most of almost endless daylight. Several of Wrangell's predators depend on the diminutive 80-gram brown lemming, the high Arctic's smallest mammal. The population cycle is roughly every four years. Numbers increase explosively, then crash, perhaps because they run out of space and food. Predators gain or suffer accordingly. This is one of the bad years for lemmings, but a more immediate hardship comes with a change in the weather. Sleet turns to heavy snow, burying the summer. Many birds don't abandon their eggs and stick it out. As snow piles up, it can really test a mother's dedication. Even muskox suffer. They can deal with the cold, but wet snow clings uncomfortably to their heavy fur. This small group, led by an old bull, becomes alert. From the valley, a second bull swaggers toward them. This can't be good. Rising to the challenge, the old bull stiffly assumes a fighting stance. They first try to intimidate each other with their mighty bulk. but the newcomer seems unimpressed. He approaches the cows, even though mating season is not until late August. The old bull has had enough.
Just a short scuffle this time. In a couple of months, the serious fighting will begin. The snow doesn't last, banished by the strong July sun. As the ice melts, Wrangell Island's tundra reveals a wild and woolly past. Exposed by the big thaw, a mammoth tusk. When Wrangell broke free of the mainland, it became an isolated haven. Mammoths still lumbered across the island 6,000 years after extinction claimed them elsewhere. Today, a different creature stakes out these hills. Reindeer. Over one-fifth of the world's five million reindeer, or caribou, live in the Russian Arctic. They're the only deer species in which both sexes grow antlers. Their search for food brings them across the bird colony. The snow geese are preoccupied. Their eggs have begun to hatch. The first chicks could leave the nest within hours, but she may have up to four more eggs to go. When a fox appears, the chicks reconsider leaving the nest at all. But today, the fox chases other prey. It scours the thickets of dwarf willows for its quarry, a Siberian brown lemming. Sharp eyes and ears pay off, a rare treat in this bad lemming year. The coast seems clear, but not so fast. Even other predators don't mess with the ferocious wolverine. Good thing he's too busy raiding the fox's egg cache to bother with the geese. One last chance for a nap. As soon as the other eggs hatch, the whole family will move to the flat tundra, where big lakes offer food and safety. Some families migrate over 70 kilometers in all kinds of weather. A long and dangerous journey for the chicks. Migrating birds work fast, arriving in May before having chicks and departing again by late August. In July, the warmest month in the Arctic, the tundra turns green and food grows plentiful. The vegetation has a short growing season, just 50 to 60 days before snow falls again and land freezes. Animals must take advantage. Parents rush to fill the mouths of hungry youngsters while they can. In the mountain regions, Arctic foxes aren't so lucky. Where normally half a dozen cubs would frolic, only two undersized ones await the return of their thin mother. This summer's lemming crash has taken its toll. She's left to scavenge berries, carrion, insects, sometimes even animal feces. She'll bring back whatever she can find to sustain her cubs.
the snowy owl also feels the pinch. In good times, she'd eat up to five lemmings per day, but not this year. She has two chicks in her nest instead of the usual ten. They beg, but she has no food for them. In years with few lemmings, many snowy owls don't breed at all. The underdeveloped chick will have trouble keeping up. Its stronger sibling will bully it and take most of the food. But only if the mother can find enough. Down on the tundra plains, things look brighter. These four-week-old fox cubs have developed faster thanks to a nutritional boost from goose meat. Arctic foxes have the biggest litters of any mammal, up to 22. An average group of 11 young normally eat about 30 lemmings a day, increasing to 100 before leaving the den. But with lemming numbers low, geese have gone to the top of the menu. Even though this litter is small, the sibling rivalry among these three is fierce enough. Both parents, and even a third non-breeding female, will feed the cubs. From their size, it's clear the goose wasn't their first food drop. While two squabble, the third outwits them and makes a clean break. When they're 10 months old, they will be fully mature and weigh as much as house cats. If times are lean, they may not move too far from home. With its belly full, the bone thief returns. No hard feelings, just a soft spot to nap until the parents return. In the hills, the mother snowy owl is still scouring the landscape for food. From a high vantage point, excellent binocular vision helps her spot prey. In the grass, a highly prized lemming sniffs the air. Owls can't move their eyes in their sockets, but they can turn their heads three quarters of the way around for a panoramic view. It also helps them to pinpoint sound. While she makes a silent attack, her chicks are cold and hungry. It's a success, food at last. The instant she drops the precious lemming, the larger chick claims it. By now, the smaller baby can hardly move. Seeing the problem, the concerned mother tries her best to save her starving chick. It 
it's too late. Along the coast, the Arctic ice flow breaks free of the island, granting aquatic migrants passage. Some take on 5,000 kilometer journeys. White beluga whales. In the summer, they travel along the flat Russian Arctic coast, searching for crabs and schools of fish. Without sharp teeth, they suck their prey in and swallow it whole. In winter, they head east to the Bering Sea. These pods can number in the hundreds, but when females have young, they form smaller nursing groups. Here, a whale just a few hours old sticks close to its mother, hitching a ride in her slipstream. High above, seabirds also enjoy the ocean's bounty. Along the rocky coast, several species form large, raucous breeding colonies. Red-legged kittiwakes plunder small fry. And the robust Brunix guillemot can number over a million. Jutting up between the sky and the deep sea, this chaotic avian apartment block offers young birds protection from predators. But sometimes it's the neighbours you have to watch out for. Fortunately, the management provides showers. Arctic seabirds have to be resilient. Strong winds dry fields of pack ice towards the coast. What's a waterfall one day can turn into ice the next. The drab vertical faces are not without local colour. Horn puffins, named for the fleshy projection of their eyes. Some still play the dating game. In August, young guillemots plunge from the rock face and head for water. Quite a challenge when ice closes in. Chicks can't fly, but they need to reach open waters so their fathers can feed them. Arctic foxes, here to dine too, move nimbly across the flows. As he tracks over the ice, the clean Arctic air carries a clear scent beacon of the birds' movements. But a four kilo fox must tread more lightly than a one kilo guillemot. Or else. A quick roll to dry the coat, and it's off to thicker pastures. The remarkably tough guillemots navigate the broken flows to reach open sea. Only then will the young learn to fly. In mid-August, ice fields break up around Wrangell Island.
Polar bears spend much of the year out on the solid ice, but when the white land cracks, it's time to move on. Their Latin name, Ursus maritimus, means sea bear, and for good reason. Big, paddle-like paws make them strong swimmers. They have been tracked on 160 kilometer journeys. But mostly, they spend their time lying around. As the ice recedes, roaming bears have one last chance to jump off at Wrangell. Global warming has increased the time it takes for solid sea ice to form along Russia's northern coast. The ice is the lifeline for the polar bear to get food. Every year, hundreds of bears take refuge on Wrangell to await its return. Life on the island means lean pickings. But resourceful polar bears find ways to pass the time. Like any puddle-loving youngster, this young bear can't resist a shallow lagoon. And then it notices its own reflection. But something even better catches its eye. Only ever witnessed by a lucky few, a fishing polar bear. But what now? The bear has little idea how to handle its prize catch. Usually, polar bears hunt for seals out on the pack ice, but the killer instinct took over. A huge surprise for the bear. As the days grow shorter and cooler, autumn comes to wrangle, the season of the musk ox. In September, all over the island, males gather to compete for dominance. Often, two bulls of different strengths try to intimidate each other. When bulls are evenly matched, the fighting gets serious. Each weigh around 400 kilos. They can charge at up to 40 kilometers per hour. impact can be heard a mile away. The force is like a car hitting a brick wall at 27 kilometers per hour.
They collide at the central section of their horns, 30 centimeters wide and thicker than a brick. Bony horns are covered with a layer of keratin, the protein that also forms hair and nails. They rest on a massive skull bone. Even so, the bulls can only take so much. One will eventually tire and retreat. The winner keeps the harem. Meanwhile, as the tundra slides into autumn, the snow geese prepare to leave. Tens of thousands gather near the coast of Wrangell Island. In just six or seven weeks, tiny hatchlings have grown to over a kilo. They are ready to fly as far as 5,000 kilometers to New Mexico. As the fields grow silent, and the temperature continues to drop. The island returns to the polar bears. With no ice to hunt on, the bears are hungry. They're stuck here. They need the whole region to refreeze before they can move away. Mothers and cubs patrol the gravel banks for scraps. The youngsters stay under her protection for two and a half years. Other than when mating or caring for cubs, polar bears are solitary. If threatened, adults can charge at 40 kilometers per hour. Mothers with the youngest cubs stay on high alert. Other older cubs appear curious but need to keep their distance. Body postures are used as warnings to stay away. Mothers normally remain placid, but bad-tempered males with five-centimeter canines are best avoided. They can weigh up to 800 kilos. They take no part in raising cubs and will sometimes kill them. Females will defend their cubs if need be, but wise mothers simply avoid potential dangers. <laughs> Thankfully, the old bear is preoccupied, scouring the shore for food. In times of plenty, polar bears will eat a walrus's blubber and leave the rest. But these days, they'll take what they can get. This young male has found an old walrus skin. Tough as old boots and probably the same flavor. It'll have to make do until they return. Wrangell attracts the world's largest population of walruses. Like polar bears, they normally live on the ice. Up to 100,000 come here when the Chukchi sea ice melts. Their arrival means fat times for some lucky bears.
Eventually, the walruses will have to come ashore to rest. The bears must be patient a while longer. The walruses are ravenous themselves. Each devours about 60 kilos of shellfish every day, leaving mountains of cracked shells in their wake. While they wait for the bears to leave, they fill pouches in their throats with air so they can stay buoyant and sleep upright. The big male continues his patrol, passing bones from kills of previous years. Out of sight, a lone walrus has pulled up on shore. Segregation from the herd means it's probably sick. The polar bear maintains his waterside vigil overnight. When morning comes, it's clear he found the solitary walrus. He may have eaten 70 kilos of energy-rich blubber during the night. With blood not quite washed from his face and paws, now he is full and slow. At the shore, a second sitting is about to begin. The younger bear has an air of caution as he approaches another's kill. But he needn't worry. An adult walrus can weigh up to 1,700 kilos, so it can provide quite a feast. The youngster must eat fast. Polar bears can smell food 32 kilometers away, so he won't be alone for long. When the coast is clear, the walruses finally come ashore to rest. Their unique tusks, actually enlarged teeth, average half a meter, but can grow to twice that. They're handy for fighting, cutting into ice, and tearing into prey. But these social animals enjoy a group cuddle, and tusks can be a liability. These gatherings carry other risks too. Young calves sometimes get crushed as dozens of heavyweight adults pile on. Still, most manage to find a safe and comfortable resting position. Others must settle their differences first. Once they regain strength and the temperature sinks, they'll head to the Bering Strait for winter. By October, the temperature is dropping rapidly. For polar bears, it's almost time to swap land for ice again. Despite dipping towards minus 40 degrees Celsius, bears pay no attention. They're wrapped in thick fur and up to 11 centimeters of insulating fat. 
broken fields of pack ice reach the coast and begin to freeze together. The bears are released. Mothers take cubs onto the ice for the first time. With global warming affecting the melting and freezing of the sea, each year a stay on Wrangell will likely last a little longer. In the Arctic's world of biting cold and howling storms, nature lays down harsh rules. But there are rewards. High above in the ionosphere, the aurora borealis, or northern lights, dance 100 kilometers overhead. This dazzling display is created when charged particles and molecules collide in the upper atmosphere. Dancing far above Russia, they shed their cold and beautiful light upon the stark, frozen landscape. This is life in the Arctic. <laughs>